Good evening. Welcome. Welcome to the 30th Educational Publishing Awards Australia. We are just about at that point where a winner might be younger than the awards. And we're online tonight, coming to you live and in front of a studio audience from the Wheeler Centre in Melbourne. So hello to all those people who couldn't make it and who are watching from other parts of the country. We are glad you're here. But it's a real highlight that there are so many of us here, together, in person. Almost like the before times. My name is Michael Gordon-Smith. I'm the Chief Executive of the Australian Publishers Association. I'm delighted to be your MC for this evening. But let's take a moment to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land we're on and pay our respect to the past and present elders of the Wurundjeri, Woiwurrung and Bunurong Boonwurrung peoples of the Eastern Kulin Nation. Today's actually, um, fortunately, or fortuitously, um, Indigenous Literacy Day, so um, announced by the Indigenous Literacy Foundation, one of the, um, one of the organisations that our industry is extremely supportive of. We're very fortunate, therefore, to have a formal welcome to this country from Auntie Janet Galpin from the Boonwurrung Land and Sea Council. Would you please welcome to the stage Auntie Janet Galpin. Thank you, Michael, for the introduction. So, Womanjika. Womanjika is the Boonwurrung language word for come with purpose. And if we think about those words to come with purpose, everything we do from waking in the morning to sleeping in the evening is done with purpose. And tonight, your purpose for being here is for the Educational Publisher Awards Australia, celebrating excellence in the industry, including its people and the learning resources that they make. Educational publishers are creators of high quality learning resources for our early childhood, primary, secondary and higher education. And there must be nothing more satisfying than being productive in the learning and education of our future Australians. I was recently asked what can we all do to make more of an impact for our first peoples. So I would ask that you take on board what I will be saying to you tonight in different parts of my welcome and then start to think about what we've already contributed to this great nation and what we contribute every day. So it is my purpose here this evening to deliver a welcome to country. So welcome to all of you and welcome to our beautiful country, land of the two bays and Boonwurrung country. Tonight we have the pleasure of welcoming you from whichever country you are from. I'm a direct descendant from our first peoples and cousin to Nawi, Dr. Carolyn Briggs AM, the elder of the Boonwurrung, and I'm here tonight representing her. Obviously, I'm also of Irish and English descent. We also pay our deep respect to the Wurundjeri of the Woiwurrung, with whom we share many common boundaries throughout our lands and also this city. We are the custodians of our lands that extend from the Wilson's Promontory in the east to the mouth of the Werribee River in the west, encompassing both of our beautiful bays, Western Port, we call Murren, and Port Phillip, we call Nam. This country is unceded land. Tonight we meet on the country of our ancestors and we pay our respect, not just tonight, but always to our ancestors, those people who came before us. And we're especially pleased to recognise the commitment that you've made here tonight in paying respect to the spirit of this land and to our First Peoples. Through this, you have shown the willingness to honour sacred ground. For the past over 200 years, we have been largely ignored and all but written out of the history of our great nation, Australia. So when I get the chance, I like to recap some of our history that we want to have as a shared history with you. We are the oldest living, surviving culture in the world, and this is something that we want all Australians and peoples of other countries to connect to. From well over 65,000 plus years ago, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people were this country's first explorers, 
first navigators, first engineers, first farmers, first botanists, first scientists, first diplomats, first astronomers, first teachers, first artists, first healers, first lawmakers, and today we are excelling in all of these fields of expertise because generations of our ancestors have preceded us. Australia also has the world's oldest oral stories. Our first peoples engraved the world's first maps and made the earliest paintings of ceremony. And the very first footprints on this continent were those belonging to our first peoples. So we ask that you recognise and celebrate that our First Nations people have occupied and cared for this continent for well over 65,000 years. We invite all Australians that are here with us today to embrace the ancient history of this country, a history that dates back thousands and thousands of generations. This includes the Boon the original habit inhabitants of their country, and our Boon people still live and work on their own country today. So the word Waminjika, as I said earlier, translates to come with purpose, but it's also a contract between the people as the custodians of this land and yourselves. According to tradition, this land has always been protected by our creator Bunjil, who flies as an eagle, and our waterways are protected by Wa, who travels as a crow. Bunjil taught the Bunwarung to always welcome guests, but he requires the Bunwarung to ask all visitors to make two promises I will ask of you here this evening. And the first one is to not harm the land of Bunjil, and the second is to not harm the children of this beautiful land. And if we can commit ourselves to just these two promises, we live in a far better world. And this commitment was made by the dipping, so this commitment was generally made by dipping a small bough of leaves into the waters and the spoken words, Waminjika. Thank you everyone and have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Auntie Janet. Thank you, Auntie Janet Galpin. Okay, um, the rules for this evening. You'll have noticed that we've adopted the same approach as the UK Parliament, not quite enough seats for everybody. <laughs> it gives that, this is such a special event, they're sitting in the aisles feeling. But, but we know it, needs, it means we need to keep this tight. When we finish here, there's food and drinks, and you should have plenty of time to enjoy being here together. So tonight, I'm not going to go through all the judges' comments for each of the winners, but please check them out online later. Um, they're, they're thoughtful, and they will inform the decisions. And no speeches from winners. <laughs> not No long speeches. No speeches from winners. <laughs> if you win an award, there's applause, lots of applause, and you come to the stage. You can run if you like, but don't fall over. <laughs> you collect the award, you shake a hand. There'll be a person with a hand just over here. <laughs> you do a U-turn, and you head back down the same stairs. No speeches, but there are photos, professional photos. Winners will be whisked away to have their triumph recorded and our photographer will stay on for 20 minutes after the ceremony. So grab your colleagues, get a pick against our celebratory backdrop, but it's first come, first served, so get in there in the 20 minutes after we stop. <laughs> you all look fantastic. The prizes uh, under their cover are gleaming and waiting to be um, presented, but we could not have got here without our sponsors. So a really, a big thank you to Booktopia, Copyright Agency, Media Super, R.R. Donnelly, and the Opus Group. There are people here tonight. Yes, please. There are people here tonight from each one of those sponsors, so please look out for them and make them welcome. And if you don't already know about them, check them out on their websites when you're back at your desk. These awards were created to showcase excellence in Australian learning resources. And 30 years on, you're still producing excellence. Mark O'Neill has been a leader in excellence, innovation, technology, and change in education for just about as long. He has possibly longer. He has degrees in physics, Japanese, and management and expertise in teaching everything from business English to maths. I'm very grateful that he's the treasurer of the APA. 
To say a few words from the APA's board, please welcome also its Vice President, Mark O'Neill. I thought I was on This Is Your Life there for a second. <laughs> um, it is an absolute honour and a privilege uh, to be welcomed to Wurundjeri, Woiwurrung and Boonwurrung country uh, in the manner that we were. And I, I hope you um, will join me uh, in another round of applause and a big thank you so much to Auntie Janet Galpin. <laughs> and how wonderful does it feel to be back together in person for the first time in so long? The Educational Publishing Awards have been running since they were founded by the late and great Mike Horsley in 1993, with the objective of promoting innovative and leading edge educational publishing. And it is my pleasure on behalf of the Australian Publishers Association to confirm that we continue to meet that objective and to welcome you all here today for the 2022 series of awards. These last two years have been challenging for our nation, for our schools, for universities, for teachers, academics, lecturers, for students of all ages and their families. During multiple lockdowns, as an industry, we were able to keep learning happening with the highest quality digital resources for remote learning showcasing our vital role in the education ecosystem. And through our association, the APA, we're able to continue to advocate and communicate with stakeholders as a thriving, socially impactful industry. I'm really delighted to see uh, many of my fellow APA board members here tonight, including several from trade and scholarly publishing, who perhaps wouldn't normally come to an event such as this. So welcome to them and welcome to you all. Competitors, colleagues, but most of all, friends. Regardless of the result tonight, or the results tonight, you're all winners. So let's celebrate our industry and the excellence in educational resources we deliver. That's not a call for everybody to get a, a participation ribbon. <laughs> That's a call for us all to be proud. Be proud of what we do, because what we do matters. Enjoy the evening, laugh with friends, and good luck with the silverware. And finally, it falls to me to introduce a video message from the Honorable Jason Clare, MP, Federal Minister for Education. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Let me begin by acknowledging the traditional owners and custodians of the land on which you meet tonight, the people of the Kulin Nation, and pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging. Paul Keating once said that a good education was like having the keys to the kingdom, that master key that unlocks every door, all the opportunities in life. Every Australian, no matter their postcode, their parents or the colour of their skin, deserve access to that great education. One that allows all students the chance to realise their full potential. But as you know, students can only thrive if we create the right environment for them. That includes dedicated, fantastic teachers, a strong support network, great facilities, and quality learning materials. And that's where you come in. The Australian Publishers Association and its representatives are an integral part of Australia's education system. Quality learning materials are vital tools that can boost learning experiences and support our fantastic students, whether that be a picture book for our littlest learners, a digital resource helping students through tough equations, or a university textbook that supports aspiring doctors. It's you that deliver these vital tools. And it's been especially important in the last few years as we've navigated COVID and had to adapt to an ever-evolving digital world. So thank you 
thanks for your contribution to the education sector and prov for providing our students and our educators with world-class teaching resources. Your work is helping to shape the next generation of scientists, academics, health professionals, teachers and much more. Congratulations to all the nominees and the award winners of the 2022 Educational Publishing Awards Australia and have a fantastic night. Thank you, Mark. It is very heartening to hear a federal minister recognise that your industry is indeed an integral part of Australia's educational system. Very welcome words. Of course, that's one of the reasons why um, the people work with, the, with such passion in this business. And Mark talked about that as well. We, we asked a few people, um, wh why do they do it? The reason I love educational publishing is because it does so much good for children, particularly in the early learning field of learning to read. It changes people's lives, because if you can read, you can do anything in life. It's an industry where you truly feel you can make an impact for the generations and citizens of the future. I love the product, the people and the culture of the industry. Um, it's an incredibly enriching industry with amazing people who are passionate about what they do. I get to work every day with inventive, imaginative, smart, driven, committed people who spend their lives making learning more wondrous, more engaging, more rewarding. What we personally love is receiving feedback directly from schools about the difference SSP is making to student achievement. And so getting that email that says that a resource that you've created has made a difference to student engagement or to, to a teacher's enjoyment of teaching a lesson just makes such a difference. Uh, I think there is nothing more rewarding than watching a primary school student becoming proficient in reading or writing. Knowing that we and, and I can be a small part of supporting our teachers, especially during the extreme challenges of the last two and a half years, brings additional meaning and purpose to me and, and all of us here at PETA. Education has changed and will continue to change the world. What's not to love? What indeed is not to love? You, you are all fabulous. But we're here to give prizes and someone's got to choose. Reviewing all the entries and making the choice is a huge task. Our judging panels do it with professionalism, dedication and patience. On behalf of the association and of all the entrants, thank you to all the judges. Since 2017, our Chief Judge has been Professor, Professor Angela Carboni. She's Associate Deputy Vice-Chancellor Learning, Teaching and Quality for the STEM College at RMIT, and she makes sure that the judging can be trusted, that the process is valid, and the results are reliable. Please welcome to the stage, Professor Angela Carboni. What a great audience is out there. All right. I can open up my notes. All right, thank you, Mike, uh, for the introduction and welcome everyone to the 2022 Annual Education Publishing Awards. Um, before I start, I'd also like to acknowledge the people of the Wurrung and the Boorong and the Wurundjeri people who are the traditional owners of the land on which we meet today and pay my respects to their past. Uh, present and, uh, and future elders. I also extend my warmest welcome to all the recipients of the awards. Many of you will be here tonight. They're invited guests, my fellow judges, professionals from a range of Australian publishing and supplier companies and also the sponsors. As Mike already mentioned, I am the Chief Judge and this is the sixth year I have chaired the judging process. Obviously like to do this, Mike, and keep coming back. Uh, this year I was supported by a cast of 21 extremely hardworking and dedicated judges to evaluate the entries. We had 103 entries and we awarded 27 of these in a variety of disciplines across the three categories of primary, secondary and tertiary. As an expression of thanks, I would like to invite those judges here 
uh, tonight to stand up so we can give him a round of applause. So, <laughs> there we go, stand right up, there we go. Thank you. We spent many days together going through the judging process. Uh, tonight, I share with you some insights that went into judging the entries, starting with the judging process, and then you'll hear from some of this year's judges about the judging criteria. So there were three stages to the judging process. Stage one was the individual stage. All the, um, uh, all the judges individually reviewed the submissions. These were uh, placed online, assessed the entries based on a set of judging criteria, and then entered their score into an online system. Stage two was the moderation stage. This is where individual judges came together to share and reflect on their ratings, and they outlined the rationale um, and the reasons for their evaluation. They were allowed to change their evaluation after they went through the discussion with other, other judges. Collectively, we shortlisted the entries and decided on a winner um, in that category. In some cases where it was extremely, extremely difficult to decide on a winner, we recognised a close second entry um, with highly commended. And then stage three, the final stage of the judging process, is the, process the judges reviewed the top entries across um, in their subcategories and decided on the overall winner for that category. And now I'd like you to hear from some of this year's judges as they share with us what they're looking for when they're judging a good resource. If you could please play the video. When looking for a good teaching resource, I'm really keen that it is truly student-centred and that it's assisting in the development of 21st century um, learning models and context. So at a fundamental sort of level, you want to have a strong degree of trust in it to start with. It should really light you up, it should challenge you and it should tell a sort of compelling story. I'm looking for a resource that presents information accurately and has carefully considered and made transparent the alignment to the curriculum. Will it support teachers in teaching that particular subject or learning area? Is it clear, easy to use and easy to implement? And will it have an impact? Uh, there should be opportunities for regular feedback as well, so students can reflect on their learning process. Uh, you want clear learning goals and relevant and authentic applications beyond the text and also a contemporary style of writing so that that's really easy to follow and accessible for all learners. I mean, ultimately learning should be fun and it should be easy. And those aspects of design and content really create a resource that can be both. Judges that contribute to that video. <laughs> to summarise, the judges assessed against uh, judging criteria uh, that looked at the publishing contribution, the educational rigour, of each entry, its written visual and audio components and reviewed the, the product as a whole. And I was there to make sure that uh, I was the independent person making sure there was, there was uh, no biases there. Uh, again, thank you judges for your contribution and commitment in assessing the educational entries uh, for this year's awards. Um, to the publishing sector, I trust you'll continue to develop new and creative and innovative resources to support our teachers in their journey to improve the learning experience of their students. Thank you everyone, enjoy the rest of your evening and I look forward to being part of the judging process next year. Thank you Angela. So, um, let's, let's present some awards. We start as usual with the primary categories. And the first is educational picture book. The shortlist is Boss of Your Own Body, ABC Books. Earth Matters, Loving Our Planet, Wild Dog Books. You Matter, Be Your Own Best Friend, Wild Dog Books. The Fire Wombat, HarperCollins Publishers. Emergency, Emergency Vehicles to the Rescue, Wild Dog Books, Walking in Gagajou Country, Exploring the, Mo the Monsoon Forest, Alan and Unwin, and Somebody's Land, Welcome to Our Country, Alan and Unwin. 
this was one of those tough decisions. Uh, narrowly missing out, walking in Gagaju country, exploring the monsoon forest by Alan and Unwin <laughs> was highly commended, was highly commended by the judges. But the winner was somebody's land, welcome to our country, Alan and Unwin. I think, th I think there may be somebody here from Alan and Unwin. Yes, come on down. <laughs> Congratulations. You turn back down the stairs. Bravo. The next category is chapter book and the shortlist. Wildlife Wong series, Estralita Publishing, and Bailey Finch Takes a Stand by Text Publishing. And the winner, Bailey Finch Takes a Stand by Text Publishing. I'm looking around, but I don't think there's anybody here from Text Publishing. So we will um, park that one and send it to them by post. <laughs> Primary reference resource, the shortlist. Between Worlds, Extending Students' Multimodal Literacy Practices with Augmented Reality by the Primary English Teaching Association Australia. Transforming Practice, Transforming Lives Through Diverse Children's Literature, Primary English Teaching Association of Australia. And Teaching Poetry for Pleasure and Purpose, the Primary English Teaching Association of Australia. This was a tough call <laughs> on a split decision um, transforming practice, transforming lives through diverse children's literature missed out and got a highly commended. But the winner of the Primary English Teaching Association Award for Primary Reference is Teaching Poetry for Pleasure and Purpose. Next up is a broad category, primary student resource in any of arts, science, humanities, social sciences, technologies, health, physical education or languages. And in this category we have an unchallenged category winner and the winner is Australian Curriculum Geography Revised Edition by RIC Publications. I had a look through the, um, I had a look through the list of uh, people who had bought tickets, and I don't think anybody's here from RIC Publications, I think they're still in Perth. So we'll um, send that one to them by post as well. Um, onwards, student resource English, literacy, literature and language. The shortlist, Oxford Spelling F to 6, Oxford University Press. Little, yeah, please feel free to whoop. <laughs> Little Learners, Big World Series, Little Learners Love Literacy. PM Orange to Silver, Nelson Sengage. Nelson Phonics in a Box, number one, Nelson Primary. Oxford Reading for Comprehension Decodables, Oxford University Press. Soundwave Spelling by Firefly Education. In a split decision, the judges highly commend Oxford Reading for Comprehension Decodables by Oxford University Press. But the winner, by a narrow half head, is Soundwave Spelling Firefly Education. Here they come. No, no, it's a, Occupational Health and Safety Prevents Running. Excellent, you do it together. Bravo. <laughs> Student Resource Mathematics Numeracy has a clear winner, no short list, straight to the winner, Bond Block Series A to Z Type.
They weren't on my list either. I think they're still caught in the pandemic. A to Z type, if they're watching, I hope uh, that's a, a happy moment and we'll send the award on. We arrive at the last of the primary category, teaching resource. The shortlist for primary teaching resource is daily workouts for foundation to year six, Oxford University Press, teaching mathematics through storybook series, A to Z type, Think Unique, your comprehensive guide to cultivating tomorrow's innovators through project-based learning, Glittering Minds. Indigenous Discovery Big Book Series, Learning Media Limited. And Teacher Hub, from Seven Steps to Writing Success. The, te the, the teachers, the judges really liked Seven Steps to Writing Success Teacher Hub, but in a split decision, the winner is Indigenous Discovery Big Book Series, Learning Media Limited. Congratulations. Thank you, Angela. Uh, Je Mark mentioned at the beginning that we've got a couple of, um, of members of the board of the APA here tonight who uh, might not have been here in the past. Um, and the APA's president, James Keller, is one of those. He is here tonight. Would you please welcome him to the stage to help present the secondary awards? James Keller. Do you want to say hello? I'll say hello. Say hello. Um, I'll, I'll just say a few words. I'm a trade publisher, um, forgive me. I'm also an educational publishing awards virgin, so be kind. Um, uh, I'm delighted to be here though because educational publishing is a vital part of our industry and educational publishing plays a vital part in Australian society. So I'd also like to extend my congratulations to everybody that wins tonight, but also to all the shortlistees. I'm very well aware with awards that um, they don't necessarily change the revenue or the um, bottom line, um, but there's nothing quite as sweet as the affirmation of your colleagues for a job well done. So congratulations to everybody. Thank you very much. First up, student resource, junior, mathematics and science. Shortlist, Oxford Maths Victorian Curriculum 7 to 10, Oxford University Press. Oxford Science Victorian Curriculum 7 to 10, second edition. Jacaranda Maths Quest Years 7 to 10. And BitMaths Teacher License and BitMaths Student License Firefly Publications. And the winner, by a unanimous vote, BitMaths Teacher License and BitMaths Student License Firefly Publications. We've skimped this year. We have, no, we have no saxophone on stand. There's no music for you to come up to. Bravo, sir. Student resource junior, English, humanities, languages, art, technologies, health and physical education. Shortlist. Parliamo Italiano Insieme Levels 1 and 2, second edition. Nelson Assengage Company. Oxford Humanities Victorian Curriculum 7 to 10, second edition. Jacaranda English 8. And Avanti Tutta Lingopont. The judges. Split decision. Points. Second, highly commended Jacaranda English 8. But the winner. Avanti Tutta Lingopont. Come on down. <laughs> Unfortunately, we don't have a crowd camera, but I could see from here there was a fabulous moment of delight. <laughs> Student resource senior, English, humanities, languages, art, technologies, health and physical education. Shortlist, 
HTAV Modern History Series. Jacaranda Business Studies in Action, New South Wales. Analyzing Australian History, Cambridge University Press. I think they've been waiting for that. Try again, Cambridge Society and Culture, stage six, Cambridge University. Highly commended, close, analyzing Australian history, Cambridge University Press. But the winner, Cambridge Society and Culture, stage six, Cambridge University Press. Who are you gonna send up? Hey, there she comes. Yay! <laughs> Student resource, senior maths and science. Shortlist, Cambridge, senior science biology VCE. Come, they're setting a standard here. I'm going to want to see that equivalent now. <laughs> Biology for VCE units one to four, Oxford University Press. Oh, no. <laughs> Heinemann Biology, sixth edition, Pearson, in partnership with PASCO. Interleaved Maths Essential Connections, Kennedy Press. Vic Science Biology, VCE units one to four, Nelson Assengage Company. And Jacaranda Nature of Biology VCE units one to four. S close call, highly commended, Vic Science Biology VCE, Nelson Assengage Company. But edging in front, the winner, Jacaranda Nature of Biology VCE units one to four by Jacaranda Publishing. Bravo. Which brings us to teaching resource. Shortlist. Parliamo Italiano in CMA Levels 1 and 2 Teacher Toolkit from Nelson Assengage Company. Novel Ideas. Teaching Fiction in the Middle Years. The Australian Association for the Teaching of English. Building Engagement in the Middle Years Mathematics, Oxford University Press. And Exam Plus VCE Biology Units 1 to 4, Cengage. Into the final turn, close, Building Engagement in the Middle Years Mathematics, Oxford University Press, highly commended. But nosing in front the winner, Exam Plus VCE, Nelson of Cengage Company. Huzzah. <laughs> and that brings us to the last category in secondary, reference resource. The short list for reference resource is a short list, just two. A plus HSC Year 12 Mathematics Study Notes and Practice Exams from Nelson Assengage Company and Oxford Study Buddy Revision and Exam Guides from Oxford University Press. Which is the winner? Oxford Study Buddy Revision and Exam Guides, Oxford University Press. Let's keep that going just for a moment. Bravo. Yes. Thank you very much. I said at the beginning how much we appreciated our sponsors. 
Tamara Knight is the Territory Relationship Manager from Booktopia, and they are supporting these awards for the second happy year. Please welcome Tamara to help me present the awards for TAFE Vocational, Tertiary and Scholarly. Tamara Knight. Thank you. Bear with me. I'm currently on maternity leave, so I've barely put sentences together in a while. So. At Booktopia, we are proud supporters of the work that EPA does year round. It's great that we can contribute to celebrating the educational publishing industry and the educators for their well-deserved hard work at an event like this. And as people have mentioned, in person, which is really lovely. This year to date, we at Booktopia have engaged with over 10,000 academic institutions across every level from early learning to tertiary education across the country and New Zealand. That's a lot of people and a lot of students to serve. We have team members located in each state working directly with schools and education institutions to curate lists and deliver the books needed. This is why the educational publishing industry is extremely important to Booktopia as we all work together on, with our ongoing commitment to ensuring we are consistently serving communities, educators and students in their quests for learning opportunities, educational needs and to quench their thirst for knowledge and growth. So we are here and very proud and grateful to fly the flag for great work everyone in this room has done and continues to do. Congratulations to you all. We will continue to get as many people reading as we can. Uh, and thanks for inviting us and for getting me out of the house. <laughs> Thank you. Don't go away. There's a mark just over there. If you stand there. Thank you very much, Tamara. Um, let's keep going. Awards for the teaching. The, uh, where are we up to? Um, vo TAFE, TAFE vocational and tertiary, and scholarly. The first category: teaching and learning resource, digital only adaptation. The shortlist, strategic management, competitiveness and globalisation, 7th edition, Cengage. And digital update, psychology from inquiry to understanding, Australian 3rd edition from Pearson. And the winner is digital update, psychology from inquiry to understanding, Australian 3rd edition from Pearson. Come on down. It's a long way, isn't it? We really should have a saxophone player, just kind of. I, I, I would, but you wouldn't, I wouldn't like it if I didn't. <laughs> Teaching and learning resource, print or blended learning, print and digital adaptations. The shortlist. Medical Surgical Nursing for Australian Students, a Systems Approach, first edition by Wiley. <laughs> Lifespan Human Development, fourth edition with MindTap, Cengage. <laughs> Helping Children Learn Mathematics, fourth Australian edition, Wiley. <laughs> and Principles of Anatomy and Physiology for Nursing and Healthcare Students in Australia, also from Wiley. In a close run race, helping children learn mathematics, fourth edition from Wiley was highly commended. <laughs> Missing out just a little bit to their colleagues, principles of anatomy and physiology for nursing and healthcare students in Australia. <laughs> Bravo. Next up, teaching and learning resource, blended learning, wholly Australian. And the shortlist for this is learning to teach in a new era, second edition, Cambridge University Press. <laughs> the road to nursing, second edition, Cambridge University Press. <laughs> Becoming a teacher, seventh edition, Pearson Australia. And the sort of title that's easier to say, business law by Wiley. And the winner is Business Law by Wiley. Yeah. 
Is there another person from... Oh, yes, there they are. Oh, Brent, hello. How are you? I'm well, sir. <laughs> Um, just for those people who don't know, Brent was also the chair of the organising committee for the awards. To the, so he's done a whole lot of work for the awards as well as apparently doing some good. <laughs> Next, teaching and learning resource, Print Holy Australian. The short list is teaching, early childhood, primary and secondary, first edition, Cengage. Assessment. <laughs> Assessment, Feedback and Reporting, First Edition, also Cengage. <laughs> Yat Julijan, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Nursing and Midwifery Care from Cambridge University Press. <laughs> the judges really liked Assessment, Feedback and Reporting and gave it a highly commended from Cengage. <laughs> but edging its way into the front, the winner, Yat Julijan, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Nursing and Midwifery Care from Cambridge University Press. <laughs> and we move on now to the vocational education and training categories, starting with teaching and learning resource, print or blended learning. Shortlist, early childhood educator, for Certificate 3, 3rd edition McGraw-Hill. <laughs> Carpentry skills for Certificate 3, 2nd edition McGraw-Hill. And Construction Pathways, 1st edition from Cengage. <laughs> and the winner is Construction Pathways. <laughs> Cengage. 1st edition, ah, there we go. Congratulations. <laughs> and now we have the scholarly non-fiction book of the year. The shortlist. Sound Citizens, Australian National University Press. Another Day in the Colony, University of Queensland Press. Secrets of Women's Healthy Aging, Melbourne University Press. Vandemonians, The Repressed History of Colonial Victoria, Melbourne University Press. And Farmers or Hunter-Gatherers, Melbourne University Press. And this one must have been tight because there are two highly commended. Farmers or hunter-gatherers and secrets of women's healthy aging, both from Melbourne University Press. I don't know, now if there's somebody here from Melbourne University Press, they must be thinking they had three horses in this race and two of them have just missed out. But the winner is Vandemonians, the repressed history of colonial Victoria, Melbourne University Press. Come on, are they here? Oh no. Three horses in a race and they don't come. That's not very good. <laughs> we will move on to people who are here. Media Super is the industry super fund for the media industry and it's sponsored the, um, our trade awards, the Arbias, for several years. This is the first time that they've been associated with the um, Educational Publishing Awards and I'm delighted. Uh, th that They probably don't know, but a, a very, very long time ago in a, a former life, I was once a trustee of a superannuation fund that was one of the beginnings of Media Super. Back then, there were, um, I think in my first meeting, there were $3 million of funds under management. Um, uh, now, have Media Super now having merged with CBUS, I think that's measured in billions. It's an astonishing story of what's happened in that sector over the last, you know, within, a, within one um, small lifetime. Luke Fitzpatrick is a senior manager at Media Super. Please make him feel welcome. Thank you, Michael. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, such great energy in the room tonight that I'm, I'm going to really try and not read all the stuff that I've written. 
Um, what I'd like to do is just, I guess, introduce you to Media Super, those of you who, who aren't aware of the fund. Uh, the fund is dedicated to the print, media, entertainment, arts and creative industries with a proven pra uh, track record of long-term returns, competitive fees and a unique understanding of our members' uh, retirement needs. Um, as, as Michael's just touched on, Media Super and CBUS have undertaken a merger this year and that's brought us to, you were close, a $70 billion fund. Um, all profit, two members, uh, about 850,000 members that um, I guess we do all our work with the goal of uh, dignity and retirement for our members. Um, the increased scale and growth will benefit Media Super members by providing access to more investment opportunities and the greater scope manages fees effectively and access to innovative products. Um, I think really importantly and something that we very much hang our hat on is our ESG approach. So we're proud to be recognised as one of Australia's leading responsible investment super funds. Um, we're delighted that CBUS and Media Super members benefit from our really robust um, environmental social governance ESG approach. So our commitment has a really deep focus on workplace safety and labour rights. We expect companies we invest in to have good working conditions, robust health and safety practices. Cultural heritage, we're committed to working collaboratively with companies and First Peoples to consider the challenges faced by First Nations people and understand the risks and opportunities. Modern slavery, it's important that modern slavery isn't part of the production and supply chains of Australian goods and services and climate change. We steadfastly advocate for a transition to a climate resilient economy. Uh, the merger is a positive move for employers like yourselves that deal with our industry because we think we will give you a better product for your superannuation. Um, very, very proud to be a part of tonight. Congratulations to all the nominees and uh, hope you have a great night. Thank you very much. <laughs> Mark over there. Can you stand on the mark? It'd be great. Thank you, Luke. Luke will stay with me now as we present a very special award. Mark O'Neill mentioned earlier Mike Horsley. Mike Horsley was a pioneer. Um, he died far too young. He's, this, the award that we're about to present is named after him. He was a man who had, whose energy um, was one of the important drivers to the, to the commencement of these awards. He was an academic who understood and, and pushed the value of educational resources. Um, it is fitting that the Lifetime Achievement Award for this sector is named after Mike. I'm delighted to announce that the Mike Horsley Award winner for 2022 from Cengage is Sophie Kalanyecki. Well, um, I won't keep you for ages by rambling on and on um, about my lengthy career in publishing. Thank you very much. Um, just to say that I am quite overwhelmed and absolutely delighted. I thank, uh, thank you at the EPAS and the publishing industry for bestowing this award upon me. I'm privileged to have worked with inspirational authors and colleagues on my journey and I hope that I will be able to give that back um, to the colleagues that come after me and who work with me now. I'm thrilled to be working in the vocational sector. Um, it's dynamic and um, as you can tell by recent news, it, it's in the news all the time at the moment. There's job skills summits, there's talks of funding, um, there are royal commissions into training and in aged care and disability in the finance sector, all which travel down into curriculum for vocational education. We'll be seeing more changes as we go on. There'll be more talk of post-secondary education, learning how we as content developers can alleviate the pressures arising from mandatory work placements, how the VET system will respond to industry and industry 4.0 and the tech demands, how we will cope with micro-credentialing, um, how we will work with enterprise and the large corporates in non-accredited training, and what, how the regulator will ask, and that's ASQA, will, um, how the, what the impact of their new self-assurance model will be. Will that mean um, more continuous improvement? 
Um, and will that be linked to a reduction in regulatory burning for, a burden for the sector? It's a wonderful real world training environment that can deliver great outcomes, vocational training. We strive to develop relatable content designed so that students can practice, reflect, self-assess and extend their knowledge. Thank you again, EPAS, and my Cengage colleagues for being content first. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations, Sophie. The Copyright Agency has been a long-standing sponsor of these awards. You know them well. But since we met the last time, they've got a new chief executive, Joe Johnston. Would you please give a warm welcome to the new chief executive of the Copyright Agency, Josephine Johnson. Thank you. Um, thank you, Michael, and thank you, everyone, for having us here this evening. My name is Jo, and just between us few friends, um, I do have a confession to make, which is that I am a girly swat from way back. So tonight, celebrating textbooks is um, more exciting for me than the Oscars and the Logies and everything rolled into one. Never in my wildest dreams did I imagine that I might be able to be in a room where people were giving a standing ovation and whooping for a maths textbook. <laughs> but I like to say thank you, I'm in my happy place and you are my people. <laughs> and on behalf of Copyright Agency, we are truly delighted to be here for our eighth year as sponsor of these awards. We are so privileged to be a part of this industry and we, we fully support the essential role that you play in the creative sector as a whole and even more importantly in the transformational opportunities that you bring to children through providing quality Australian content. And we are happy every day to support you in your endeavours. Um, the Copyright Agency, as many of you will know, was actually born out of the need to ensure that publishers and writers were fairly remunerated for the use of their work in educational institutions. So we're very proud to be here tonight to support you. I congratulate all of the shortlist. I, I congratulate all of the highly commenders and, and the winners. And I say thank you to everyone for having us here for such a fabulous evening. Thank you. On the mark of it, on the mark. Thank you very much for your support, Joe. We're up to best of breed. Um, these are the big prizes. Here's a reminder of one of last year's special winners. Last year, STEM Education in the Primary School was awarded the Outstanding Tertiary Resource for Blended Learning. We are thrilled to receive this recognition from the judging panel. This resource was created with the intention of bridging a learning gap for pre- and in-service teachers in the STEM space. It takes a problem-based learning approach, offering hands-on experience in teaching students how to investigate, plan, create and improve on skill-based projects. We flip the content of the book so that the practical ideas and activities are at the beginning and the theoretical information is at the end. But having said that, all of the earlier chapters are also like research informed. So I think um, pre-service teachers can use it as, you know, through their university degree um, programs to gain insights and knowledge into STEM education. And then they can take it into the classroom and use it to like dip into as a resource um, or a toolkit, which is, what it's called, a toolkit, um, as well as a guide for planning and programming. The thing that I really felt challenged with was um, in a maths classroom, I was a maths teacher. In a science classroom, I, I was a science teacher. So essentially I had like 
two personalities, you know. Even though there was so much connections between the areas, I never really got a chance because I think my take on um, connected learning is that, you know, when you connect learning, students basically know, hey, this is, we are doing this in maths. We are drawing graphs and this is how it can be applied to science. And when we draw a graph in maths, we are drawing, a, you know, working out a gradient or the intercepts. When it goes in, in the science class, well, this is what it means in an experiment. And I think we have to find those connections, you know, and I think that is one way to engage students with the learning. And I think it's giving students the opportunity to collaborate, to, to communicate, to work on um, their creativity and their uh, um, critical and creative thinking. So I think that is another of the, the ways that, that STEM is going. And I think STEM is driving that and, and, it's, and that's what's keeping the STEM bus going, if you like. I was so excited to win our category, but even more proud when we won overall best tertiary resource for 2021. This book is needed for us as lecturers to be able to use in our classrooms, preparing the future teachers, but also can be used by teachers in the classroom today. Our mission at Cambridge University Press is to support and enhance quality education at a global level to ensure that we are able to develop resources that unlock the potential of our learners. We are thrilled to see STEM education in the primary school meet these goals and look forward to creating more exciting resources like this one in future. For this year, first, the outstanding primary resource. The judges said about this resource that it created a text that was uplifting, accessible and easily used that it was exquisitely written, that it raised the bar of excellence to deliver vital contemporary content and nuanced understanding to students. It's Bailey Finch takes a stand by text publishing. <laughs> they, will be, they will be very disappointed um, uh, not to have been here to hear that. The New Zealand booksellers, I met the New Zealand booksellers um, at. Uh, I think possibly at the Arbias, and, and they told me that in New Zealand, the Special Booksellers Award has a rule l like a chook ruffle in a pub. <laughs> if, you're, if you're not there, you don't get the award. <laughs> it, it's only because we've already etched the stuff on the, uh, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to chuck this back and make another decision. <laughs> but I'm going to recommend that for next year. Next, we present the award for outstanding secondary resource. The judges said of this that it was an invaluable tool for teachers preparing their students for final examinations. It provides an enormous bank of past questions from which teachers can construct practice exams. It has powerful filtering tools that enable selection of exams, either broad-based or focused on a particular area, particular area. And it outputs that in a style that exactly matches the VCE paper, enabling students to practice in exam-like conditions. The winner is Exam Plus. <laughs> VCE Biology Units 1 to 4, Nelson A. Sengage Company. Congratulations. Applause. That is an, a, to, be, to be chosen in one of these outstanding categories, I think, is a major accomplishment. The final one, the outstanding tertiary and VET resource. This title, the judges said, stands out as superior. It's a solid, practical, multimodal resource that can be used in classrooms, online and for self-study. The writing is clear. The learning journey is scaffolded and supportive. It is a beautifully created learning resource. It is principles of anatomy and physiology for nursing and healthcare students in Australia from Wiley. Congratulations. Applause again.
So that brings us to the last two awards of the evening, generously, generously sponsored by the Copyright Agency. And these are awards not for texts, but for publishers. Not for text or resources, but for publishers. Um, the first is the award for primary, sorry, I should tell you before I tell you that, that the, the, the awards are based on the vote, on votes by librarians, teachers, and educational booksellers. We send out a survey that's answered by close on a thousand people. Um, in a new edition this year, each company nominating was asked, in addition to the survey, to state why its 2021 performance merited this award. And the, um, the vote tally and rankings, and rankings together with the um, account of what had happened this year was looked at by a panel of industry experts, which included a member of the APA's board who was not an educational publisher, and that's determined the final winners. Um, the awards for, um, uh, the, so the first up is primary publisher of the year. The, the judges um, uh, wanted to make a particular um, mention of the work by Nelson Sengage for their work in amplifying the voices of First Nations peoples um, that was described in their submission. Um, but the winner for 2022 Primary Publisher of the Year is Seven Steps to Writing Success. In the past year, they have undergone a complete transformation with updating their website, their membership platform, their training resources and printed resources. All of those have been rebranded, rebuilt and rewritten and their responses from educators were outstanding. Congratulations. The final award of the evening, secondary publisher of the year. The panel uh, remarked on Jacaranda's continuing strong popularity. Um, in a very close uh, decision, looking at uh, two companies that had uh, pretty much identical levels of popularity, but the winner has worked this year or last year to reduce their direct environmental impact and created a culture where everyone is supported in improving sustainability practices. It's Cambridge University Press. <laughs> Come on, we can't wait for everyone. Oh. <laughs> Bravo. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. And that brings the awards to a close. Congratulations. Congratulations to all the winners, to everyone on the shortlists, and indeed to everybody who has contributed to the work of Australian educational publishing. Australian educators improve the futures of millions of Australian students with the excellent tools that your industry delivers. Thank you. Should I? I shouldn't have said that, should I? I shouldn't have said that brought the end. Thank you again to the sponsors. Please make the sponsors welcome. Tell them their support is appreciated. I want to do a very large personal thanks to the Committee of Volunteers who organised this whole awards project for judging the website content and this excellent event. And to the great people on the APA team who've worked with them, Anna, Ingrid and Tessa, don't go away. Please don't forget that you can get a group photo. There's food and drink and the bar is open. Good night. <laughs>